If I say that one can make a career out of blowing, squirting, and lubricating hard shafts, we all think of a fog buster. And these things are pretty neat. They give you most of the perks of flood coolant without turning your milling machine into a smelly bathtub. Unfortunately, they are also 400 bucks or more, so we'll make this for about 35. The plan is to take a little block of aluminium, drill an air passage straight across, and a coolant passage that comes from the top, meeting the air in the middle. Then we strap in a couple of flow valves to regulate the mix of the two and make a simple nozzle that comes out from the front. Then we strap some pneumatic connectors to any container that can handle enough pressure to feed out the coolant. Or you could simply buy a Fogbuster knockoff for maybe even less money. But why buy a low quality product when you can make a low quality product? I started by drilling the larger holes to thread for the pneumatic fittings and then came in with a 2.5 mm drill bit to make the channels. I scientifically choose this size because it gives me enough visual confidence to drill a hole deep 20 times its own diameter without snapping in half. This drill bit of the smaller side looked a bit too flimsy. I also wasn't very keen to play machinist roulette by power tapping blind holes, so I went for a hand job, which is always a guarantee. And to keep things straight, I put this small center in the drill chuck and use the fine feet to keep pressure on the tap as I start the thread. Gets a happy ending every time. Since I also happen to have a corner end mill, I even put this fancy radius to make it look slightly better than a piece of scrap fished out from the trash, but, but it's not a critical feature. Nozzle starts as a 8mm aluminium bar cut at twice the maximum reach of my 2.5mm drill bit, so that I can come from both sides and get a through hole. Then it was time for some makeshift turning to shave enough material from the EOD of the nozzle to use an M8 threading dice. And since I like my thread straight, I used the same fine fit trick as before, using an empty collet to press against the flat face of the die holder. And voila! I then turned the other end of the nozzle to be a close fit with this beefy syringe needle that gives me a final exit section of one millimeter. This kind of makeshift turning actually works very well for small touches or small parts, but if you need to turn larger diameters or cut threads or tapers, you'll need an actual lathe. Or you could use today's sponsor, PCB Way. They offer all sorts of CNC machining services for prototyping like turning, 5-axis milling and EDM cutting, but also laser cut and bending for sheet metal fabrication, plus you know they are truly an amazing people to work with or they wouldn't deal with my insanity. And their platform is really well done, you can just drag and drop any step file for a preliminary automatic quotation before finalizing all the details and the final price with a human. Then you can easily follow the production advancement of all the parts you have in order from your profile. Long story short, they are awesome. Check them out, use the link in the description, I have spoken. To install our little fog busty thing on the milling machine, I have dismembered the old flood coolant nozzle and turned it into a friction arm. Now let's take care of the air and the coolant for our foggy friend. First we need an air outlet to split into two lines, which for me means taking down my dodgy air setup made with plumbing leftovers and machine a little hub with all the outlets I need plus some spares. You know, one of those little things that gives you the pleasant illusion of saving a few bucks thanks to the thousands you spent in machine tools. Anyway, once everything was neat, I plugged in a ball valve and a split. One channel gets a flow valve and goes straight into the fog buster for the air. The other channel will go into a pressure regulator and pressurize the coolant tank enough to push the coolant out and into the fog buster. We need a tank that can handle the pressure and my first choice is my wife's protein shake, mainly because it's transparent, it's sturdy and it's for free. The plan is to drill the lid and use a threaded piece of scrap aluminium as a backer for the valve. And what do you know? It actually worked, until I connected the pressure regulator backwards. Apparently, protein shakers are unrated for 150 psi. And for coolant, you don't need nowhere near that pressure. I mean, Tom Litton happily ran his Fogbuster out of a soda bottle. My problem, though, is that coolant is 90% water, and a milling machine is 100% cast iron. And I'm not very good cleaning after myself. So I like to use oil instead, which pressure-wise, I think it will require a little more 
punch. But besides, knowing myself, I'll feel better being sure that the reservoir can handle any spike in pressure without exploding into a cold shower of oil, coolant, or whatever into the shop. Because sadly, I ain't not Tom Lipton. Soda bottles, not for me. So my second makeshift reservoir is a spent gas tank, you know, the kind you get for cheap welding machines. But the walls turned out to be thinner than I thought, and the curve geometry was too awkward to work with for my taste. So I ended up opting for this ace of tank, which normally would be a huge waste because this thing alone cost me like 50 bucks and is rated for 3000 PSI. But at some point these threads got ruined and I'm not sure if I can trust this thing at those pressures anymore. So we'll use this because I like to decommission my high pressure vessels before they turn into high pressure projectile unless that's what they're supposed to do to begin with. But regardless of the type of reservoir you choose for yourself, I can tell you that I really like these hydraulic fittings because they are cheap and very beefy and can be easily modded. For example, this half inch connection seems made to be tapped one quarter and turned into this little contraption that will fish the oil off the bottom of the bottle once we put pressure from the top. And these bonded washers you get for cents are by far the most convenient way to get the joint airtight. Anyway, since now everything here can handle way over the 150 PSI of my compressor, I can ditch altogether the pressure regulator and just run it at full throttle and use the flow valve to, to regulate the flow. Or maybe I could use this as a regulator just to have the gauge as a reference. Anyway, don't do this unless your reservoir can take the full power of the dark side of your compressor. I had to switch few things around during assembly because apparently flow valves work only on one direction and for a change I had them backwards. But all in all, I like how it turned out. I even made this nifty 3D printed holder. Only drawback is I can't see how much oil is left in the tank, but I put on these clear tubes so I can see enough of what's going on to tell when it's time for a refill. I'll have to get a better feel for the amount of oil that gets out and it would probably be nice to have a dedicated ball valve to cut the coolant off if I only need air. But that being said, this thing is pretty slick and given the poor max RPM of my mill and the general lack of rigidity, slower and well lubricated high speed steel feels a lot better than trying to force dry carbide down the throat of this poor machine. 